Hi everybody. This is Miss Stern and I'm going to share with you a beautiful story today. It's one of my favorites. The Fire Keeper's Son by Linda Sue Parks. And this is a story from ancient Korea and you know what ancient means a long long time ago and it's about a little boy who has to make a really hard choice. It's all about being trustworthy and his father gets injured and he has to make a big choice so I want you to be thinking about what you would do in that situation. We live in an important village, Sang He's father said. I'll show you the best pictures. Sang He looked around. A few huts made of wood and mud, a few cows, a few chickens, a few dogs. Didn't look like a special village. Our part of Korea is like a dragon with many humps, his father said. The humps are the, are the mountains, the first hump facing the sea, the last one facing the king's palace. Our mountain is the first hump. Our fire is the first fire. Every evening at sunset, think about what time of day that is, Sang He's father climbed to the top of the mountain, carrying a pair of tongs. Ask your mom to show you what a pair of tongs looks like in the kitchen. And a little brass pot filled with live coals. Coals to start a fire. A fire so big it could be seen from the next mountain where another fire keeper saw it and lit his fire. And another fire keeper saw it and lit his fire. A big fire, big enough to be seen from the next mountain. And on and on. A fire on every hump of the dragon's back all the way to the last one. The hump that could be seen from the palace walls. When the king saw the fire on the last mountain, he knew all was well on the land, in the land. When trouble comes to our land, it almost always comes from the sea, his father explained. If we see enemy ships, we will not light our fire. And the next fire keeper will not light his fire, and on and on until the king sees only darkness. He will know that trouble has come to our land, and he will send the soldiers to fight the enemy. Think about these soldiers and think about the little boy, and uh, they'll come up again a little bit later in the story. We are fortunate, Sang He's father said. In your time and my time and your grandfather's time, the fire has always been lit. It is good to live in a time of peace. It is good that soldiers never came. Soldiers, tall, brave soldiers with shining swords sang he wished he could see those soldiers just once. Evening. Sang he shooed the chickens into their coop and glanced up at the mountain, looking for the fire. No fire, it was a little late. He fetched water and poured the water from the barrel and looked at the, at, at the mountain again. No fire. Sang he looked out at the sea where the sun was setting. Could those be ships on the water? No, just a flock of seagulls. No enemies, no trouble, no fire. What do you think? What do you think is going on? 
Sang he called his mother and pointed to the to the mountain. She looked and stared at the sea. Sang he, you must run and see what has happened. Something is wrong. There is no trouble from the sea, and the fire must be lit. Sang he ran up the mountain path. He knew the path like a friend, but tonight it was not friendly. Stones tripped him, branches reached out and lashed his face. He ran until he could run no more. A strange noise, a groaning sound from the bushes. Father, sang he, I'm all right, but I fell and hurt my ankle and I fear that it is broken. I cannot walk. You must run and light the fire. Sang he grabbed the little pot and ran again. The fire, he had to light the fire. His feet pounded out a song on the path. Light the fire, light the fire, light the fire. At last, Sang he ranch reached the top of the mountain. There was a brush pile ready to be lit. He knelt trembling from his run. What does it mean to tremble? Do you tremble when your muscles are sore? Can you tremble in another time? Maybe when you're a little scared? He picked up one coal with the tongs and dropped it. It broke into a hundred red jewels that glowed for a moment and then died out. A second coal, gleaming bright, bright as a soldier's sword. If there is no fire, the soldiers will come. They will be angry to find no enemies. And maybe, maybe not all of them will be angry. Maybe they'll be glad to get a chance to see the sea. I could show them the beach, where to catch the best, best fish. Maybe he'll talk to me about sword fighting. Sang he wished he could see those soldiers. Just once. I could say I dropped the pot and spilled the coals. That it was an accident. Should he say that, though? While Sang he thought the second coal burned out, he looked into the brass pot, only one coal left. One coal glowing fiercely almost as if it were talking to him, saying, light the fire, light the fire, time of peace, time of peace, in his father's voice. Is he starting to have some thoughts now? He's gonna wonder what he's gonna do. What do you think he's gonna do? Sang he carefully picked up the last coal and put it on the tinder at the bottom of the brush pile. The tinder, all those little sticks that you put on the bottom before you start a fire. It looked like it might go out. Then a tongue of flame licked the tinder. It ate all the tinder and reached greedily for the brush. Soon the whole pile was aflame. Now here's where he's going to imagine a little bit. This is his imagination talking. Sang he watched the flames. He saw a great battle. Soldiers, their shining swords clashing. After the fire died out, Sang he waited until the ashes cooled, then swept them aside. He built a new pile of brush for the next night, as his father had always done, and his grandfather before him. Then he walked back down the path. His father was waiting. Did it burn well, my son? Yes, father. He put his arm around his father's waist. His father hobbled and walked and leaned on him. When I was a boy, I too wished the soldiers would come. What did his father know? Sang he drew a quick breath. 
How did he know? Do not forget, my son, we are part of the king's guard, just as the soldiers are. We are the first part. The village will be pleased to hear that another trustworthy firekeeper has been born to our family. Why is he so trustworthy? Think about that. What did he do? What choice did he make? What choice would you make? Suddenly, sang he was glad he had lit that fire. And until his father's ankle healed, it was sang he who climbed the mountain every evening at sunset, carrying the brass pot with live coals. Coals to start a fire. A fire that could be seen from the next mountain to tell another fire keeper to light his fire. And on and on, on the till the king himself knew that all was well in the land. I hope you enjoyed this story as much as I enjoyed reading it to you. It's one of my favorites, and I'm a reading teacher, and I love, love, love picture books. After you read this, draw a picture and make three parts. The beginning of the story, the middle of the story, and the end of the story. Then ask your parents or whoever's home with you if you could have some Play-Doh or clay and you can fashion your own toy soldiers and you can play with them. Or do you have some in a bucket someplace that you can take out and you can pretend and play your own game and you can reenact this story or make up your own do some research on Korea. That's where this story takes place. And see what you can find out about it. You might need a little help on the computer with your parents or an adult for that. So until next time, my friends, happy reading. You've become very smart readers just after this one story by thinking so much. I'll see you next time. Bye.